I think M80 are the best team in NAL at the moment. You, you've ranked them fourth, um, if I'm going off this uh, graphic correctly. So that's obviously a big difference. Um, keen to hear what other people think. Obviously, it's not our specialty region, but I just think that M80, they showed enough yep. um, th through the regional stage one to be you know very confidently making this major. Uh, yep. Let's just naturally get into this one then. Episode number five. I had absolutely no idea that would be done, but here we are. Uh, stage two preview. It means that finally esports has returned for R6. That means, yay, we've got work. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a bit ironic considering one of our earlier episode titles was Is R6 Esports Dead? But uh, no, good to be back. It has been a very, very, very long break. It certainly <laughs> has. Uh, obviously, a big, big off season. A lot has changed. We've got new maps, new operators coming in for stage number two, of course. Um, as of recording this, we have actually already started the stage. A couple of regions. I yep. think it was uh, Korea, Asia, uh, South Asia, and Japan have all begun. And a couple of more probably actually going to begin like this morning, tomorrow morning or whatever. So um, it's all kicking off, which is really good. The next month and a half is kind of like a carnival of R6 esports. We have this dry spell for three, four months, and then it's just all bam every day um, coming at you. Uh, before we do get into that, of course, that's going to be, I guess, the main premise of the show. We'll be sort of briefly previewing everything, yep. breaking it all down. Uh, we've got some fun predictions to go through as well, especially leaning towards the major. Uh, there has been some issues regarding the, the new season launch, which obviously I think <laughs> is probably a bit more effective than me. I haven't been able to have time to play, but um, clearly some issues. Yeah. Um, look, I think in terms of the game itself, when you can get into a game and the addition of RAM have actually been great. Um, fun operator hasn't been completely overbearing, but in terms of the... The technical side, the back end, there were some really serious critical issues at launch. I think for the first 16 to 24 hours, matchmaking was very spotty, if not completely broken most of that period. You could get into a custom game, but you couldn't matchmake. So you couldn't play public games at all, pretty much for the first 16 or so hours, which was really disappointing. And then as a part of that, my understanding is, and they listed this on R6 Fix, they disabled the ranked API to try and alleviate some of the server load. Um, they then came out and publicly said, uh, your rank will be visible in future. It's still being tracked. However, I looked at the, the Ubisoft support account um, and on the download, they've come out and said, yeah, scrap that. We <laughs> don't actually have that data anymore. So apologies. Um, those ranked games don't count. So that's very frustrating for the 40, 50% of people that do play ranked, myself included. Pretty much means that you can discount the first week. Um, didn't really count. So... Certainly some underlying frustrations and, you know, the sentiment at the moment is that a lot of people are annoyed at the way in which the season launched, especially with the game now being out for eight years. It's not really acceptable. Um, I get it. It's live service. Stuff can just randomly break uh, and it always does for, for all different titles, but nonetheless, a, a disappointment and has probably marred what overall has actually been, you know, a pretty good update. It's been a pretty good period as well in general, I think, for, for Rainbow Six. A lot of um, non-typical R6 streamers have come into the fold as content creators getting in and around it. I think the numbers on Steam are like the highest they've been for the last two, three years. So to have a bit of a crap launch is probably not the best time to have it, but uh, fingers crossed all of the issues can get sorted out, especially the servers and people can get playing. Um, because I think, yeah, a lot of the actual updates and changes themselves, and as you said, when you can get into the yeah, game, they're fine. They're, they're actually all really good and, and everything's fine with that. Um, Moving on very quickly here to actually an update that's coming out for another game, Counter-Strike 2. We love talking about it on this show. Which <laughs> at this point we might need a CS2 show, um, which you've got access and I don't, which is really <laughs> annoying. Um, they have a rank per map system, which is a very intriguing idea. would love to meet the man who came up with that because it's a very smart one. I'm not too sure about it though in the grand scheme of things, right? Now we put out a poll yep. uh, on our X no, it was actually on YouTube. You can do polls on YouTube. Ooh. So yeah, we're, we're very much stepping it up in that game. And, and I asked the community, right? How, how would you feel if there was a similar system in R6? And for those who are maybe scratching their heads, haven't been following CS2, understandable. Pretty much they're trying to force players into diversifying their map pool by assigning a rank per map. So you can't just be an office global or a vertigo, a vertigo global, which in Siege terms would be like being a border global, right? Mm -hmm. It's not really reflective of the game as a whole and with the new uh premier system the new band system in cs2 it is trying to encourage people you know diversify their pool so i asked that question um 30 of people said yes they'd be for it wow the majority though or um, 
said or forty percent said no and thirty percent unsure. So it seems to be a little bit split in that regard. So obviously keen to hear what, what people's thoughts are on that. And I guess the thirty percent unsure leans into the fact that this is a pretty new system gaming in general in terms of obviously competitive shooters. So I'm very keen to see sort of how it plays out before I can probably fully form my opinion regarding it, but I think it's a, an intriguing idea. My first view on it though, unfortunately for CS2 is that it leans into then almost like, you know, you have the one trick heroes in like League of Legends and stuff. <laughs> people just get like really good at like one character yeah. and then that's it. I think then that leans into now the map. So you can be obviously global or in the case of uh, obviously Siege, maybe a champion at like Border or, or, or in Oregon or something. And then when you go to another map, you're like gold. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't know about that one. Like, are you just going to play the same map over and over again? Don't you get sick of that? Don't you get bored of that? But I guess that's what the system's... I think the idea of the system is to try and get people to diversify and try to get global or champion in a siege sense on multiple maps. But maybe it will have the reverse well, effect where people actually want to just specialize on a map because you get yeah. that cool rank. I don't know. I will say, obviously, this is more probably a, a topic for CS2 where you can choose your map. Right, this but is not in Premiere, there's a ban system now. Oh, okay. So there you go. I mean, Which is I, different to Siege. So this is I, a, we're going down a bit of a rabbit hole, but... Yeah, I, I guess in theory, if you can't choose your map and then the rating system is based on your performances on said map and you've got no choice in the matter of whether you pick it, play it or whatever, I like it. I, I actually kind of like that because I could be really good on Inferno and I could be absolutely donkey shit on Vertigo, which I think is probably the case. <laughs> <laughs> You're not good on Inferno. Like I'm definitely not good on Inferno <laughs> either. Um, and yeah, I, and I think you can then actually pretty easily apply that to Siege. Yeah. If that's the case. If you refine the band system, um, I think there's a world in which you could do that. And again, try to encourage people, diversify their pools. Um, maybe it's a bit artificial. Don't know. You'd have to see it tested, but just something I thought I'd, I'd flag. And it seems like the community is split yeah. on it. So, it's yeah. certainly a uh, fascinating idea. Can't wait to see sort of how that plays out. And who knows, as is the case with these kind of Speaking ideas. Speaking to your mic, mate. You're getting yeah. a bit far away. Yeah, I was, you know, I don't, <laughs> I, I get, mm, mm. Um, as with these ideas, once someone does it once, or in this case, you know, obviously it's Valve. CS, Copycat. Copycats will become the thing. And obviously for, for Rainbow Six and probably for other shooters, Valorant and Co, they'll all copy on and within the next 12 to 24 months, it will be a very common system. Okay, so moving forward now uh, to esports, that is going to be the, the main talking point, the main segments for this particular podcast, of course, today. It's the stage two preview slash breakdown. Uh, and this is obviously what excites us the most and probably where we can be a little bit more knowledgeable than even just the main game. Uh, before we get into the actual uh, regional system breakdowns, we can talk about sort of the updates now, as we know, uh, changes to the map pool in the sense that Villa's being taken out along with theme park, short-lived time <laughs> in the pool. <laughs> yeah. uh, and obviously we've seen Nighthaven Labs come in and Consulate, the reworked Consulate. Uh, Fenrir and Ram have also made their way in. Speaking about the maps first... Now, we've seen a little bit of Consulate. We actually probably saw more Consulate than we anticipated, I think, yep. uh, last night. What's your view on it straight away? First glance, you've just seen it. Is it new? Uh, it, has it changed anything in your mind from previous Consulate? Um, well, I, I just want to backtrack for a moment and say that, yeah, I very much expected to not see Consulate at all in the best of one system. Um, I probably anticipated if we were going to see either new map that it was going to be Nighthaven Labs and um, briefly talking to, uh, I think it was Crow actually, on the uh, Asia desk. Uh, it seems like that is maybe more preferenced over in the NA region. So there's a chance when NAL kicks off, we might see Nighthaven played a little bit more. But in terms of Consulate itself, the way it played out, uh, obviously it's very, very different to old Consulate. Um, the main factor being they have added so many more buffer rooms and lines of sight that the attacker needed to clear. And a good example of that was we often saw teams head attacks from like admin, for instance. And back in the day, you take admin, you're pretty much already then pressuring sight almost immediately. Whereas yeah. now you have to clear the vending hallway. You've got uh, multiple angles from like front desk spiral. You've got the new like weird exterior breach thing, etc. that you sort of now need to clear out. So it does, and it has slowed down the pacing significantly but i think we talked about it a couple of times on the cast right it takes time for any new map or rework to be worked out by the attack more often than not it lends itself naturally into the defense um but overall i think it was actually decently entertaining to watch we saw some cool stuff especially in south asia actually with the you know the solace pulse vert play etc um but nothing strayed hugely far away 
from what I've been seeing personally in my own ranked games, to be completely frank. The only difference might be, um, you know, some more extensive takes from the attack from like top floor down, which you would kind of anticipate in a comp environment anyway. So it was certainly interesting. Um, don't know if it was necessarily my favorite map to watch, but it actually wasn't terrible either. For reference, the old consulate, and ironically, this is when I started casting Siege. <laughs> Back it was a in 2020, it was, a debut. it was the map, wasn't it? Especially yeah. in our region. I mean, we probably can't speak for all regions about it, but it was just very common, very overplayed, and it was played the same every single time that we got it. Truthfully, after casting it twice last night, there is obviously large similarities, isn't there? I, I don't think it's like played completely the same. I think it's tweaked it into a, a probably slightly better better feel uh, at least to watch it. it it seemed like it flowed a little bit better i liked how they've extended sort of garage now uh, delivery if you want to call it that they've extended it out a little bit so that gives the attacking teams some more options there uh it felt like there wasn't so much of the same focus necessarily about you have to get the vert for example on like a garage you want it but it's not necessary all the time so um i'm just trying to think of even like we i think we saw like uh servers Towers once. I don't think we see too much of that. A lot of focus was still upstairs. Second floor saw a lot of focus. And it was yep. all pretty much same, same. I didn't see too much roof play from teams either, to be completely honest. A bit of the repel every now and then on certain sides um, was a, a lot of the entry points. But other than that, it played rather similar. But it did, it did seem like the map itself, obviously, as it is, has been expanded on. And so therefore, there's a little bit more room. You can do a tiny little bit more things differently. Other than that, I, I thought it was yeah, I think, largely the same. I think just very quickly on that re note of repelling back when Consulate was in meta, um, that was my biggest gripe with the map is the majority of the round would be spent with, with the majority of the attackers either outside and or on repel. Mm. And it just made these really awkward mini games with verting and, you know, lobbing util and stuff. Um, the only caveat to that was maybe like the yellow stairs mini game was often quite fun in the util dump meta. Um, mm. and, and teams that excelled well there often did well on attack. That's now been almost taken away to an extent but we did actually see like the shotgun meta come into effect now yeah. that, that yellow transition in towards you know that, that split bathroom hallway position can now be an option so that hasn't been completely eliminated but i do think that some of the other annoyances that i at least personally had with the map have been alleviated but I, yeah I, I somewhat agree the map hasn't completely changed but at the same time it's certainly seen a facelift yeah certainly visually i think it obviously looks a lot better and it does look like a more modern day map so look i'm fine for it to come back into the map pool see how it continues to play out and i don't think we're missing too much to be completely honest in theme park or villa um, villa played exactly the same every single time every single round and obviously for theme park it just never it never clicked for me and teams never played it. It just yeah. didn't really seem to fit what we wanted from Siege Esports. Uh, we'll quickly touch because we obviously didn't get to see labs. I don't think we'll talk about labs too much. Can't wait to see it. Might take a bit of time before we get to see it a little bit more. Um, Fenrir, we actually saw quite a bit of the uh, the old jet mines out in force. Yep. Um, and I think it was actually banned a couple of times too mm. uh, as well. I can't remember if that was Southeast Asia or South Asia or one of those three. Uh, either way, it did have some impact. We saw Ram ever so slightly a couple of times. Yep. And those uh, boogie auto breaches, actually, I didn't think did a whole lot. And that's probably my takeaway from it. When we did our sort of preview of Ram and what we first saw of Ram, we were like, oh, Buck and Sledge are dead. But I don't know. It didn't really seem like, to me, Ram was doing a whole lot when it was brought in. Yeah, I think think the asterisk i would put on that statement is though that we're not watching the best regions and i think other be other better regions are going to utilize those drones better and we also probably didn't see the best maps for it generally speaking either concert funnily enough was probably one of the maps that we saw um it gets some use um, especially on piano for, mm. for that basement attack and it was actually okay we, we saw some weird stuff like south korea um if i remember Backstairs. if i remember in <laughs> if i remember in post i'll add it in trying to throw a boogie in through blue, curving it around the, the exterior door to try and clear the shield. They didn't follow it up with any utils, so it was as easy as the defender just swinging and shooting the canister. Yep. So I think that was an interesting idea, and we could see teams actually evolve on that. Um, but it's not like Ram comes in. It was never banned, mm. and it wasn't hundred. was nowhere near 100% nah. pick rate. It's probably not even a 10% pick rate. Yep. So is that teams not utilizing it well? Did they not scrim enough on it? Um, do they not have enough ideas in the bank to maybe use it more? I don't know. We'll get an answer to that probably when other regions give it a crack as well. But I think in the instances that it was used, 
it was pretty entertaining. It was fun to watch. Always an interesting talking point because you can immediately vert and then play off it. And that was obviously the talking point, right? It's not like the sledge or the buck where you then have that transition where you're either mm. putting the hammer back away or toggling the keys. So it was a fun gameplay element, but it was definitely no, by no means completely overwhelming. Whereas the Fenrir obviously banned out a couple of times and, and leaned into that trap meta we're seeing now, right? So the the, the Fenrir and with the Legion um, buff as well, both of those got quite a bit of play. And in tandem, we did see that cause some issues for attack. So as for our earlier episode, ROP fucking Sledge? Not quite. Not quite. They actually <laughs> were very prominent. They were very heavily used. Ram, not so much. And I think, yeah, I think we'll see some tweaking to Ram. And obviously it will take these teams and players time to figure out where and when to use Ram, which I think was my actually earliest assessment was that it's not going to be the kind of operator you bring to every single you know round every single map it's going to have its niche uses yeah. and i think it'll play out that way it might just take a bit of time when they uh, figure out where and when okay moving forward to my favored segment here as we get to the regional breakdowns and and right into the nitty-gritty which i imagine is going to take up the majority of today's episode so uh, as for what we're doing guys we're, we're basically throwing out our early seasonal predictions as early as we could possibly go um in who's potentially going to make the major who do we think is the teams that are in the best positions to contend in their regions to make it to atlanta uh, we will start with nal and we'll, we'll put the caveat on immediately that we are not NAL experts. <laughs> that makes that, that that makes it that makes it even better, right? Because then people can uh, clown us in the comments, and we and we love that shit. Get in on us, we love it. Um, so yeah, we pretty much straight ripped uh, Jesse's tier you, Jesse. ranking system. So shout out Jesse, uh, much love. And on top of that. Um, going forward, we're actually going to be recording weekly, which is really cool. And we're going to be grading uh, teams each week, similar to what you might see uh, if you're from Australia, the AFL uh, media outlets do it. NBA, I know you were showing me as well, do it as well. So we're going to do these immediate power rankings, but then we're going to continually sort of refine them and look back at them and um, it, do that, etc. going forward throughout the stage. And obviously we encourage people to get involved in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, obviously, this is a very opinionated segment. No one really knows what's going to happen in stage two. Yeah, certainly. Okay, we'll get started straight away. Um, and we'll begin with our very early major predictions or how we think it should play out. And then from there, we'll obviously dissect things a little bit. We'll go with yours first, Guz, because this is largely your idea. Should we just do like a showdown? I mean, we should just specify for, for context. We have done these individually, yep. completely blind. We have not talked about it. I think we just do like a like a showdown, like in the Western movies. We just put it down. I'll flush it up on screen and then we can start uh, shooting shots. We'll, we'll go with yours first. You can show me yours right, and if right. you want. Now we can put yours up onto the screen. Now I'm looking at this as the same time as the viewers and i'll quickly go through it so absolutely making the major from from you guys yep. you've got m80 and you've got sonics probably making the major is space station might make the major dark zero oxygen we'll start with that that first uh, couple of brackets first and again in terms of the way we've looked at this it is also somewhat based on how many slots you've got so for nal they got the four slots yeah so you've kind of got what's that two four five teams that you think are in contention from luminosity down you're basically saying no chance yeah, um, I think I've pretty much based these rankings on a couple of things. M80, obviously very strong squad, good stage one. I don't think they're going to have too many blemishes and issues in stage two. Sonic's obviously a little bit of a wild card considering their route to the major in stage one was a little bit convoluted, but I think they showed enough promise and I think they've got a good enough backing to, to make it through quite comfortably. Obviously the next three, SSG, DZ and OXG, a bit of a different storyline, um, but I don't see any of the bottom three yep. making it through. Now over to my predictions, laying it all out onto the table and onto the screen. Uh, some slight differences straight away. Now we've both got Sonics in our absolutely making the major tier, but I've gone with Space Station instead, uh, joining <laughs> them. Dark Zero is slightly above, and I've got M80 in the same category as Oxygen. Now my belief here, again, it's based on the fact that there's the four slots. I'm looking at it as I think SSG, Sonics, and Dark Zero should take three out of those. It's down to either M80 or Oxygen. I mean, oh, that's a... I think M80 are the best team in NAL at the moment. You, you've ranked them fourth, um, if I'm going off this uh, graphic correctly. So that's obviously a big difference. Um, keen to hear what other people think. Obviously, it's not our specialty region, but I 
just think that M80, they showed enough yep. um, th through the regional stage one to be, you know, very confidently making this major. Now, I, I should add between the two of M80 and Oxygen, I've got M80 the more favoured between the two. And sort of my reasoning behind all of this is Dark Zero and SSG, you look back to stage one, popped their respective groups, looked really solid. Sonics, what they were able to do at the major itself as well when they got there. So based on the recency of that, I'm I'm basically going with that. And obviously for M80, they've had some really good results recently. I think they beat G2, W7M. I think that was at game as eight. Yep. Uh, so obviously I do rate them. In terms of Oxygen and why I think they've still got somewhat of a chance, it's still a good roster with some his, uh, history. Obviously played at Charlotte, Berlin. Um, stage one was not too bad either. Uh, evidently it will be a tough ask. They probably go into this as a bit more of the dark horse. Uh, in terms of the bottom three, though, we both basically got Beast Coast, uh, Luminosity, and Wildcard. I do have Beast Coast as more of the very dark horse between the three of them, <laughs> if maybe, rather than outright no. So that's the way we've kind of rated NAL. I don't think that, again, we can probably deep dive too much into it. They haven't started for stage two. We haven't been able to see much of them. We don't, you know, follow the scrims and, and sort of how they're going. It's really just based on stage one and, and Copenhagen. And basically, I've got to say, I think we were pretty, pretty close. The only difference being M80. Yeah, M80, obviously. Big difference. Yep. You're happy to move on. Yep. Region number two is going to be the EUL. <laughs> and uh, I will reveal mine first. Yep. And I've gone for a slightly different distribution in terms of teams for this particular region. Again, like NAL, it is four slots, but I've sort of organized these teams a little bit differently. I have G2 and VP locked in to make the major, um, but that is in stark contrast to you. Yes, it certainly is. All right, so that's yours. Now I'll flash mine up onto the screen. And uh, like you, I've also, I've just completely, yep, yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing this live right now g2 is my only team that i've got from eul that i think is a lock that i think is a certainty um i actually edited this i had virtus pro in the same category with them and i've taken them out um and i've got them at the same level as eminem because eminem also had a very good stage did well at the major um i think they actually made it further than Virtus Pro in the end as well. So I kind of felt a little bit unfair to put VP just above Eminem. And obviously I know BDS has that history, but they, uh, history is history. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like, yeah, they did well at Gamers 8. Don't, don't get it twisted. I'm aware of that. And maybe BDS is back, but I don't know if I could have put them above Wolves and Wild. I, I have all three of them fighting for that last spot. I think G2's a lock. VP, Eminem, provided everything goes well, have a good stage, should all make it. And it's down to that last three, four, that last spot, which should be very fascinating. And I think, yeah, largely we're both pretty similar in terms of the bottom three. Yeah, I think, in my opinion, G2 should probably be even stronger than they were last stage, especially with Uno jumping back in. That's also largely why I put Heroic down at the very bottom, not making the major. I think that's going to be a huge loss for them. Um, and Koi with, you know, quite a fresh roster. I don't really see them making too many waves. Jigsaw joining, very big talking point. We mm -hmm. might touch on that a little bit later. Um, but will that be enough for them to be seriously contesting for a spot at the major? Probably not. So I think the takeaway from us two, BDS, big talking point. Yeah. Um, can they make the top four? Based on their G8 result and the squad, they should be, but it could be quite close like it was last stage. I had them as my fourth. They were at the top of that third category, mm -hmm. but it's not a given, right? It's not a not a probably and certainly not a lock, that's for sure. One to watch, definitely excited to see how EUL is going to play out this particular stage. Moving on, keeping this forward and the last region, which has four slots and is arguably the best region, it is Brazil, although... I think it's just super, super top heavy. And I think we've actually got <laughs> somewhat similar here. Now we'll go to yours first. You've got all three of W7M, FaZe and Liquid absolutely making the major. You have them firmly locked in and then you've got a big gap um, down to lost one as your well, I've might. Got, I've got NIP. It's a little bit hard to see on the graphic, but That's I have true. them probably making the major. But yeah, I, I think I largely agree. Brazil is obviously an incredibly strong region. Yep. However, there has been you know grown to, it has grown to be somewhat top heavy w7m phase liquid i would be shocked if any three of those did not make mm. the major nip there is a bit of an asterisk on considering um some of their form throughout stage one was was iffy that's why i put them down to the, the probably category um okay. but i just don't see any of the other four teams making the major necessarily is it impossible no 
but I just think it's going to be so difficult to work through that top four. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty much identical with you showing mine here as well. W7M and Liquid I have as absolutely. And that's just simply because I'm a Liquid fanboy. <laughs> um, FaZe definitely should be in that exact same category. But I, I felt like putting three teams in the absolute lock. So I, I, look, FaZe is very unlucky there. And truthfully, they should be in that top category. And then probably the gap. And yeah, obviously NIP lost one. Once again, I basically have them fighting it out for that last slot. Um, and we've actually gone exactly the same for the bottom two categories. So we're pretty much on the money here. We both think that uh, the very top end talent of W7M, Liquid, FaZe will make the major as they usually do. And it's just down to NIP or Lost One for the final slot. Yeah, I think there's really too much more to add on that. Brazil looking pretty clear cut. So we'll move now on to japan and you can see my predictions right here um i have gone with scars absolutely making the major now important to note that um, this region has three slots to atlanta scars i think showed some really really good promise over in copenhagen they made the playoff stage they did some decent work and um, obviously throughout the regular stage um uh, of stage one they did a pretty decent job i think from there though the, the gates do open up significantly right you have Varel North Epson not far behind yep. and Cyclops I mean obviously had a bit of a disaster in stage one but you can never really count them out now remember of course it is only the three slots for Japan so um, as for me I'm, I'm matching you in the sense that I've gone with Scars on top um, and then I've got North Epson hard to see a little bit but uh, then they're by themselves uh, I don't think that anyone else is probably in that same category it then is sit down to CAG and Varel for the last slot for me Okay. So in terms of the the top four that I've got for Japan, I think we've actually gone for the same top four. Um, but I just kind of value North Epson higher than Barrel and CAG. I think that what they've been able to show, especially crunch time, they've been really good in LCQs, been really good in the qualification matches. They obviously did perform quite well at the major, probably should have progressed to the playoffs, all things considered. They were a little bit unfortunate that they lost that very last 15th round to Revan. Uh, and from there... Um, I think they could have actually got even more experience had they won that. So I rate North Epson. Uh, obviously, we can actually talk about this region ever so slightly yeah. because it has actually begun. Uh, closing out, though, we've both got Fnatic down the bottom. Uh, they're absolutely not making it. I've gone with Fav down there as well. We've kind of got Fav and, and Crest swapped a little bit, but it's it's pretty negligible. I don't think either of them are really in contention. So, yeah, basically, I think down to CAG and Barrel, and you think probably down to CAG Barrel as well yeah um i'll give you a chance to bring up the results we can talk a little bit about uh the first week obviously the big talking point though based on our power rankings fanatic right down the bottom um an org which has just struggled for years now and i don't think their roster at the moment is probably going to be enough to yep. do much um in this particular league which again unfortunate when you know you think of the name fanatic in rainbow six you think about all the success that they had four five years ago now but yeah, they have tapered off. I'm not exactly sure what they need to do to get back to those heights, but Japan, obviously, regionally, in incredibly, incredibly competitive. So it could be a long road for them um, as we bring up the results yeah. from the uh, first play day. So as it has stood at the moment, CAG are atop their group. Uh, they've been able to take down both Crest and Fnatic. I don't think there's really any surprises in those results still to be played in five days time will be against scars that is one to watch you want to tune in for that one if cag beat scars they mean business they're back baby but if they lose that then maybe it's the same old cag yep. where they're not quite at the very top top um from the rest of that group obviously yeah scars so i mean scars and cyclops should always be topping that group i i think crest is an okay team they obviously did beat scars and we can touch on that seven five uh, and that might be the only reason why they might finish second. That's a big result. Not sure how that's going to happen. But Scars, to be fair, is the kind of team that every now and then, Gus, they can have a bit of an off night. They can they can sometimes throw. Unfortunately, that's a common symptom of the APAC region, the old choking and throwing. So they lost that one 7-5. Um, other than that, I still think Scars and CAG from that group will be contending, obviously, for their slots of the major. From Group B, you've got North Epson, Fab, Exist, and Barrel. Certainly a lot weaker, and right now North Epson running away with it. They obviously took down Fab comfortably, took down Exist comfortably, and they've got their big match against Barrel later next week. Yeah, a little bit disappointing, though, for Val Wright not getting any points. Losing to Fav as well is very, very concerning. Exist, in my eyes, perhaps a little bit more um, forgivable. I mean, even I guess both losses actually very disappointing for Varel, especially where I've put them in my power rankings. So 
I don't know. Um, obviously, given the, the 2023 format, we can't give 100% credence to the group stage. There's mm. still plenty of opportunities, and we've seen it time and time again, teams making late runs. Uh, we, we've seen it in multiple, multiple, multiple regions. I mean, Wolves in EUL, a great example of the run they made back. And we saw it in other places as well. So long way to go, only the first week, but certainly shaping up to be intriguing again. The other thing to sort of remind everyone about as well, these group stages mean very little. It's basically seeding for the actual knockout stages. And that's when you get to the best of threes. That's when you get to the qualification matches as well for teams that can go to the major or if they miss out, go to the last chance qualifiers. So as much as it's great to have R6 Esports back the first week or two, yeah, it, it's kind of like a seeding start to the stage. And these games don't mean as much. They're best of ones. I'd still back in Scars, um, even though they've lost to Crest now in that best of one to beat them in a best of three later on. I, I'm not too worried about that result. Moving forward over to Korea, which has begun as well. Already have a couple of play days that we were um, a part of as well. We'll get yours up on the screen here first. And it looks as if you've gone with two. I can't see the, the first one because of the, uh, the background. It looks as if it will be D plus and Sandbox, which... Uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that because I have not got D-plus in my absolutely making it. Really? Okay. Uh, show me yours. We'll, we'll bring that up yeah. on screen as well. Oh, no, I, actually, I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're trolling. Yeah, I'm trolling. I was, I was like, what? Yeah, There's no. no way you don't have the two best teams in Korea. In fact, it looks as if we've almost matched completely all the way down to really the bottom two categories, Yeah. Um, which are largely the same as it is. In fact, exact order all the way from top to bottom. Uh, across the board there. So Sandbox and D+. Plus. I mean, historically, these are two teams that always make it to the majors and then they do pretty much nothing. And I'm expecting that to happen once again. La Vega, of course, three-slot region. I'd put them in there as well as being the very, very likely team. And we both then agree that it comes down to uh, BSG and Talon as the dark horses. Can they maybe upset uh, La Vega, for example, and get themselves to the major? Yeah, it seems like we're very much... In sync. I don't know. You can bring up the results, obviously, for for Korea. Um, uh, I mean, the bottom couple of teams are certainly in, intriguing. We didn't know really what to expect from the likes of you know BNA, Weeble, Blossom. Um, those rosters had shifted around quite a lot, whereas you know D Plus and Sandbox exact same kind of what we expected. That said, I mean, very quick talking point is actually Sandbox Nova jumping in the Envy. Yeah, that was very intriguing. Um, and Envy Taylor was present, so don't know if there's I I think a reason. Permanent. I think it might be permanent. But it worked for them. Yeah, so. we haven't had official confirmation. I did have a look at their Twitter to see if this was like an official changing of, or well, not changing of the guard because it's actually a return for for Nova. I guess a change for Envy Taylor though, going to the coach position. Um, now, good boy. Uh, sorry, good boy. Nova did play in the R6 Summer Cup as well. So that has not been like a last second change. It's not as if Envy Taylor was sick or anything. This seems to be pre-planned and it seems as if that this might just about continue in terms of the results well we actually did start off with an upset weeble came in <laughs> taking down bsg that certainly doesn't really help their chances of being a team that can maybe knock off a la vega for example get to the major la vega actually ended up beating d plus as well further cementing themselves as a top three team in the region yeah i just don't think d plus are particularly good in best of ones so we'll see how they go later on in the day that game did go to ot if i recall so yeah. obviously can't be too critical of that in terms of group b so d plus and sandbox are you know for obvious reasons uh split sandbox did get a very convincing victory over talon um but also interestingly bna got that dub over blossom yeah. which was probably not expected i mean a 7-5 again ba1 very very close but bna and, and both weeble as well you know playing upset at least on the consensus of the desk i think we got one prediction right we on did that only broadcast got, we only got of the one four right, games and that was the last game of the night and it was a 50 50 exactly rob so going wrong yeah it, rob went 0 and 4 which yeah. i mean, Owen. kind of expect um but yeah it goes to show that korea whilst the again the quality of the siege to be honest is still not great um the attacks were very slow and stalled out especially compared to what we saw in asia yeah but it's at least competitive oh, so. i 100 percent agree with you there as well we got to obviously see a little bit of asia after korea and it was a definitely more entertaining siege more attacker minded korea was and it's not like korea was like super defensive minded either it was just very slow and it didn't seem like they knew what kind of they were doing a lot of the times but i mean look that's korea in a nutshell they'll turn it on though every now and then and yeah. have a banging match and 
I'll get to the major. We know Sandbox and D+, plus. they'll be the, the Apex last hope as they usually are. I think they're just a slow burning region. Like truthfully, I think Korea at the start of a stage, they look honestly quite poor and you wonder how do these guys even have three slots. Then they get to the major, they upset some NAL teams or EUL teams and then they turn heads again. So that's And then they fall asleep. And then they fall asleep. Um, okay, moving forward and out of the three slot regions, now down to the two slot regions, uh, we'll start with LATAM. Uh, which is obviously a region that, once again, we don't have a whole lot of history with, um, but we do have it in terms of the major itself back in Copenhagen, uh, Six Karma and Revan both turning heads, both doing quite well. And then when you kind of go and have a look at the stage one results, they're the two standouts. Yeah, um, probably expecting Six Karma to make it through quite comfortably, and it looks like we are in agreement on that pretty much across the board, right? Um, probably going to be the, fa the the best team throughout that regular stage. are pretty dominant in stage one. Don't see any reason why that won't be replicated. And then Revan obviously continue to be a bit of a threat. They are that meme team factor, given that none of them are actually from LATAM. Yeah. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. Uh, and th I think they played some OK Siege at the Major. So I think it'll be enough to probably get them with Lanta as well. Again, just to reiterate, Lightham with two slots. So yeah, last I checked, I think Revan actually have one roster change. Runners out, right? And the last one's TBD. We don't we don't okay. know yet. So or at least it's not public. And I also have not gone digging to find out. So look, very likely two slots. Six Karma, Revan, and I think for both of us, I mean, it looked like you had E, e control. I've got Knights. I think Malvinus is probably the more likely one. If anyone's to upset, it's probably them from Latam. Uh, we'll move very quickly then to the one and only other two-slot region, which comes from Asia. And truthfully, probably a, a topic for another day, should Asia have three slots? Ooh. Ooh. Compared to... <laughs> I'm, and I'm not <laughs> taking away from any other regions. No, no, take probably, it away from NAL. I'm thinking maybe Korea. I don't know if Korea deserves three. Yeah. So that's a, maybe a conversation for another day. Either way, uh, we'll get yours up onto the, the screen here. Um, and I'm probably expecting this to be a little bit different between both of us in the terms of how we view it. You've gone with Bleed and Fury as absolutely making the major. Now, I am not too far away from you. We've basically got the same front three and technically the same four, really, um, as the way we view it. I'm just not as certain on Fury. That's the only thing. Like they're a great team, and evidently, as what we've seen from them over the last year or two, you got to remember this is still a team that went a whole stage winless, mm. technically. So uh, I, I still think bleed. They shouldn't choke this time around because that's the only wow. reason they didn't go wow. last time. <laughs> uh, and Elevate will be thereabouts as well. Diable was probably next in line. I'm not as big on no cap as you are. Okay. I'll look. I think first and foremost, the most interesting point is we have both put bleed absolutely making the major despite choking in stage one um but they sh i mean they should be yeah. they are the best team in the region in my opinion and showed it in week one i'm sure we're getting those results eventually they were dominant and they were just playing with their their prey really throughout that so they sh really really should be making this um maybe best of threes things could play out very differently but i'm not too worried about them in terms of no cap the onigiri x elevate roster whatever we want to call them disappointing in yeah, week disappointing one um, now i didn't really factor that too much into my power rankings i still think there's an opportunity for them to make it with that experience they have more so on other teams in terms of the bo3 format later on nonetheless they're still concerning and then in, in terms of absolutely not making the major it took me two seconds to just fill that out with the south asia teams not i mean in the most respectful way possible but their quality of siege is by far the worst that we saw in week one it was really really quite poor in a lot of instances there's a lot of work this region needs to do of course, that comes with needing the support required to do that. Um, it's going to take a long, long time for them to get up to par with the rest of Asia. But I think it's very safe to say that none of them are going to be doing much in terms of that LCQ. What about Shaheen's? Because I, I had Shaheen's no. a little bit higher than you. No. Just that one category higher. Nope. You've got them firmly down the bottom. I would say that um, Varianex and uh, Galita would, would beat them anyway. And they're the worst in SEA. Okay. Or it might be close, but I'd still think they'd win. Now, Liquipedia is just uh, not being my friend at the moment, but obviously we have seen a little bit of a start for SCA. Both Bleed and Fury uh, are 2-0 to start. Same with Die Wolves to Remember, it is only the two slots when you get down to the nitty-gritty of it, and I don't see a world in which... I mean, like, no cap, they're 0-2. Uh, and not only that, they've got a minus 10 round differential. Yes, yeah. they've got Onigiri back. Yes, it's a team that's been there before. They've got good history. I wouldn't write them off completely. That's why I've got them in my might. Make it. I think it was, I had them in, either in my might or I I've got them in might. So, so I think I, you had them in probably not. 
Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and that's just the way I view it. I, I think, think that's fair. I think just probably not. To be fair, Alloway also started quite poor, zero and two and minus 10 round differentials. They're both of those in the, the same category. It's a bad day to be an Alloway fan <laughs> because uh, you either got the old roster or the new roster that are both terribly um, poor from the first play day. Very next champion, Goleta, esports all just make up the numbers. Um, I think if I'm Dying Wolves, I'm pretty content with yeah. how things have started. Two uh, nothing start. And I think that for them, it's just about peaking at the right time to get to the major. Yeah, I, they were definitely a standout for me. I did not give them near as much respect as they deserved heading into the first play day. I sort of viewed SEA as a four and a half team region heading into the first week. Um, that being Bleed, Fury, Elevate. So I guess three and a half team, adding like half a no cap in there to maybe be an outside shout um, alongside maybe Diables. But uh, yeah, I didn't think DW would come out of the gates as strong as they did, but it comes down to peaking. It's all well and good to win, to, you know, come out of the gate strong, yep. smash your opponents in the first week <laughs> of, a, of a seeding league pretty much. But if you, uh, you know, do a bleed in the, in the LCQ, well, it's all for nothing. For those unaware, bleed esports back in stage one, seven and nothing in the stage, in the group portion, undefeated, didn't drop a map, they go into their semi-final spot. They lost 0-2 to Fury. Yep. And they therefore could not go to the major. <laughs> there was actually a lot of people upset on Reddit. Really? That Bleed weren't going to the major because they, oh, they're clearly the best team in the region. They yeah. play like it. They've got that They've got that ego, which I kind of like about them as well. They've kind of got that strut when they play. They'll run out. They'll, they'll do their run outs and make life really annoying for you. So... They deserve to go to the major. It's just a matter of this time, pull your heads in. Well, once you get down to that knockout stage in the LCQ, you can't be having too much fun. You've got to focus up. And just to quickly round out this convo, there was a format update to Asia to perhaps try and address those issues. I think last stage of the format was kind of a bit shit and didn't really probably give teams the opportunities they needed. So now it's like, what, double Elium, BO3s or something to that effect. I'll pop it up on screen. But yeah, there were some changes to make that format probably um, a bit more competitive. Yep. So that should be good. And hopefully, yeah, bleed, you know, actually play properly this Certainly time. So. Down, down to our one slot regions, you get oh, one yeah. slot, one chance. There's only the two of them, of course, it's OCE and Mena. We'll start with OCE, which is our beloved region, uh, which does begin next week, has not begun yet. It's actually the... the the one region that starts the latest, yeah, um, but ends about the same point as everyone Late else. Late bloomer. So it's uh, obviously one that I think everyone would be able to predict who we think is going to absolutely make the major. We've both gone identical. <laughs> you put them up, overlay well, each almost other. Almost identical, And there's yeah. not many differences. So we both got Bliss. Now, for those unaware, of course, Jigsaw going to Koi is a big, big factor. Uh, we won't mention who's obviously joining. We'll, we'll leave that one. Not public, I don't it's think. It's not super, super public, but it's kind of public if you know. Uh, and then obviously we've both gone for what is, I guess, the Dark Horse Underdogs being um, Triple R, Rapid Response Regiment, and Circular Spheres, both of which have made some changes. Circular Spheres picking up um, Player and Juicy um, from Homeless back in stage one, which I think are actually decent acquisitions. And for Triple R, obviously the former wildcard team, they made a couple of changes themselves. They picked up Nate and they actually picked up Pinku as well from mm. CS, which I think is a really good pickup. So the way I view this region is you've got basically, what is it, seven play days or what? You've got to go seven and oh, basically, if you think about it, because that's what Bliss did last stage. You got, they're all best of ones. You play no best of threes. There's no finals. It's kind of like... <laughs> The Premier League, it's like the soccer. You got to finish first. <laughs> You've got to finish first to go to the major, which means anytime you play Bliss, that's your grand final. Yeah. You have to beat them. You cannot rely on losing to Bliss and hoping they lose to someone else. You've got to beat them. So what I don't know what the fixture looks like in terms yeah, of. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should um I don't know if you could bring it up. I don't know if it's public or not. Maybe you'd be able to find the find the fixture. Cause yeah, I'm looking the the Bliss um and Regiment response, whatever the fuck their name is. <laughs> Is obviously a big game, um, X wildcard roster, yep. and then the, the Bliss Circular Spheres game. Those are the ones that are probably going to dictate the major. But for me, the storyline heading into this, Bliss are the favorites. They should be the favorites. It is not live. Okay. The fixture. Um, but will they? have they taken too far of a step back losing Jigsaw? That yeah. is the big question. How big of a loss will it be? How much of they had to change in the back end? Will their replacement be a one-to-one? -one? I mean, as, as respectfully as I can put it, whoever you're replacing jigsaw with is more than likely not going to be as good as jigsaw because yep. he was such an enigma and such a good player in the region that said the rest of the team is rock solid and bliss of all the teams had you know the best defined roles and they were able to flex their muscles in that regard in stage one so response circular spheres 
still playing catch up, but there is a world in which in the 7BO1 format, which I will reiterate is shit, they could pull something out. And with no BO3 in sight, anything can happen, especially with that roster change. And speaking of the very shit format that it is, and we will happily shit on it because it is a shit format. <laughs> You're playing seven best of ones to see if you go to the major. Carlton's Knights, I have actually in my probably not tier, which means I give them like a 2% chance. Well, you give them zero because you've got them in the absolutely <laughs> not. It's a team that has Pat Campo, Josh and Worthy and Leb, which I don't know if that's the old Leb. Do you know if it's the old Leb? I think Leb? so. I, th Look, I, I don't see them as a 2% chance of making the major, but I have them as a 2% chance to upset Bliss from making the major or like whoever the top team right. is. You know, maybe it comes down to the final play day and Carlton's Knights just throw everything they have at like the top team and they knock them out or something. That's the kind of storyline that would be really fun to see. I, I, I would love to see Carlton's Knights go to the major, of course, without <laughs> Carlton. <laughs> That'd be good too. That'd be good. Um, obviously, yeah, Secular Spears, as we, we quickly touched on. I, I like their roster, uh, roster player, Juicy, Japer, J. Kenner, Goof. I... I I think it literally just comes down to, can you win your best of one against Bliss? That's yep. going to be obviously a very difficult ask. And rapid response, uh, Logic, Pinku, Tuhan, Ed Pen, Nate. Um, if you get Prime Nate and you're getting Pinku uh, and he's continuing his path towards being becoming a great player, that's a really, really solid roster. Like those are two danger games for Bliss. They'll be aware of that. Those They have to take them seriously as much as you might want to see someone like an Oda talking shit about these guys and saying the whole region's absolutely dog water. <laughs> they will have to take those two games seriously, yeah. potentially three with Carlton's Knights. And moving on to our final region, it is Mena. Uh, once again, one slot wonders along with OCE. They only need the one slot though, all things considered, and we both know it's Falcons. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm giving... Um, I don't even know how to pronounce it properly. Geek. 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 Yeah, I didn't want to say it wrong. Um, I give them a slight credence to maybe pull off an upset and take down the Falcons. But similar to OCE, it's going to be that big game, that head-to-head. -head. Whoever wins that's probably making it to the major. And it's always difficult to look past Falcons. They are an incredibly strong roster. They continue to improve week on week or stage on stage. So expecting them to go to Atlanta. And honestly, this time probably make more inroads at the major itself. So... Yeah, Mena obviously an exciting region. It's not one that we particularly follow. As far as I know, it doesn't even have an English broadcast anyway. No, so hopefully doesn't. that gets changed next year because I think there would be some, you know, excitement and, and, and general interest in the region. Um, I'd certainly watch an English broadcast for it if uh, the Falcons were playing. I'd so cast. <laughs> we'll cast it. Yeah, I like money. Um, <laughs> I like money. But yeah, I don't want to harp on too much about this region. Falcons should be taking it. It would be an upset yeah. if they didn't. Yeah, it certainly would be. And obviously I think a lot of the R6 esports community is, is well and truly aware of Falcons now. They've, they've performed at Gamers 8. They've performed at Majors. I mean, they are the meta team in the same way that Bliss is the, the current OCE team, if you will. So it would be a bit of a shock if we see Geeke actually take them down. I actually, I did actually look into their qualification process. I'm pretty certain it is identical to OCE. I right. think it's the exact same, basically seven best of ones. Okay. So maybe if a Geeke Esports can knock off Comes down to that Falcons game. in yeah. one best of one, uh, which is not impossible. Funny things have happened. <laughs> Who knows? So that's going to be the conclusion, though. No more regions, no more slots. Um, that is our breakdown of obviously how we think the Atlanta Major is going to look and shape up. And as is the case, you're never going to get all your predictions correct, which means there are going to be some teams that might cause an upset or two yep. uh, along the way. Maybe a team or two from the absolutely not might absolutely make it. We don't know. That would be crazy. That would be crazy though. <laughs> it certainly would be, but that's what we would like to see. So as we get towards the end of this, it will be one of our longer episodes, I think. Uh, historically, there was a lot to break down, a lot of different regions to get through. Again, as you sort of mentioned before, the plan probably is to very much have that grading system throughout the week. We'll do a sort of a weekly assessment as to how the regions are going and how the teams are going and basically give them anywhere from an A or to an F and, and how they're sort of performing, um, which I think I probably would have given a couple of teams some Fs. <laughs> D plus. To start with, D plus certainly would have got Did not get a D. <laughs> they did not get a D plus. Elevate and no cap probably get Fs as well. Yep. So um, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, as we get down to this though, we, we probably are out of time in terms of maybe talking about Jigsaw heading over to Koi and what that could potentially do in benefiting APAC. Uh, but this is where we get a little bit greedy. A shout out the Patreon because I think we might just bring that one over to the Patreon. The uh, we've of got the a couple of really fantastic subscribers there. They'll get access to that if you want to get access to. Link down below and it really does help us out. We've got obviously our, our wonderful set that continues to apparently improve. We've changed it up. 
with the, that's what the budget goes to with um, the help of robert j monday yeah obviously yeah joining the patreon you get direct access to us on on the discord you can suggest yep. ideas and that's exactly where the jigsaw idea came from um one of our subscribers suggested that so we'll talk about that in the exclusive content and you also get some other behind the scenes stuff and whatever so if you want to support us support the show get on that for a few bucks a month it really helps us out so yeah, yeah. And we've got uh, already quite a few plans for the next few episodes coming up, mm. which uh, cooking. obviously once we get underway next week onwards, it's going to be a heavy focus on the games themselves, the way the stage continues to Stop shape shaking. up. Stop shaking your leg. You're probably um, shaking the cameras. You're a bit nervous in front of camera. Nervous, mate. I get a little nervous. <laughs> Talking about the Atlanta Major, you don't want to miss out on that one uh, for these teams. This is where they begin their journey, their pathway. Uh, excited to see how this stage goes. It, it's been a long way, so it better be a good stage. Otherwise, I'm going to be very upset. Well, yeah, hopefully it's a good stage. It's over in about four weeks. So yeah, I, I know, know yeah, it goes quick. It, 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 it's here. We're going to be stressed out working like five days a week or whatever for the next whatever. Um, and then it'll be over. So yeah, I think it's going to be good. Obviously, some super exciting storylines. And uh, yeah, keen to hear other people's thoughts. Are we right? Are we wrong? Yep. Probably wrong. Let us know. Yeah, as always, of course, for those that were able to make it this far into the episode, big, big shout out, big love. Uh, if you want to give us your thoughts, uh, please do so down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to make the major? Give us your predictions. Uh, tell us if we're wrong. We probably are. And we want to hear it from you. <laughs> big shout out once again to all of our patrons as well. We can't do it without you, quite literally. You give us money and that goes straight back into this as well so big big shout out to everyone we'll see you again next week for another episode or potentially on the streams themselves that's where of course you can always catch us we'll be doing some casting over the next couple of weeks that's for sure we actually have a job we actually have a job once again so that's that's <laughs> great all right so let's get underway with the uh the patreon episode for those on patreon you'll be seeing this for those that aren't well thank you so much make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next week Bye bye peace